Revelation 18.4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, that ye receive not her plagues. Now this is the nation of Israel in the tribulation period and Babylon. But I don't think we would do any harm if we take the doctrinal application of Israel in the tribulation and spiritually apply it to the Christian to be a true. We are God's people by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are his children. We are not to sin. So we do sin. We are to come out of this world, of Satan, of the flesh. We are to be separate. We are to be in a division. God is for division. Separatists in early New England is what the Baptists were called. When they left the state church, the state religion of New England and went about the biblical principles and the biblical salvation and the biblical church function. They separated themselves and they were called separatists. That's in your Baptist history. If you're at work and they're going to have a Christmas party, you ought not to be involved in the Christmas party. Well, they're not going to have liquor or anything. Christmas is not Christian. I don't care what your pastor says. I don't care what your church celebrates. Christmas and Easter are pagan festivals. I don't care about the children. Are you going to do what's right? Or are you going to be partakers of the sin? Because for the Christian, judgment seat is coming. And you will not be excused for your sin. That you've chosen to commit. And when you heard this video, you have been told that Christmas and Easter are pagan. It's up to you now to go check it out. It, is what I said true? Or did I lie? And you just can't go running to a pastor or a friend or a fellow Christian. When in doubt, check it out. When you got co-workers and they're coming up to a break and you say, listen, we got to go outside. We're going to have a cigarette. Will you come with us? Well, I'm not going to smoke a cigarette. Secondhand smoke, hang around with people. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. What if a new Christian just got saved? What if they see you hanging out with people smoking? You know, it is a sin to put a stumbling block in front of other Christians. Even though it's not a sin for you, if it's a sin of God, and others perceive it to be sin, I'm trying to find you. I don't have... I got, I got this. You say, what are you doing? I got a white pen in my mouth. I said, I got a white pen in my mouth. What's wrong with that? Far away, somebody can think, hey, that's a cigarette. I don't put white pens in my mouth. I do have a pen. I, well, it's over there. I can't. I put it in my mouth. It's not white. That's what I taught in prison one time. The guy's like, wow. It's only a white pen, but the Bible says it's stained from all appearance of evil. 
you're going down the street and you have a a bottle of Pepsi or Coca-Cola, whichever you like, and you got it in a brown paper bag, you're going down the street and you're drinking from it. What's it look like? Is it wrong for a Christian to drink Pepsi or Coke or orange crust, whatever, in a paper bag? Abstain from all appearance of evil. What's it look like? Be not partakers of her sins. You're going to be judged as God's people. God says, come out. Don't look like them, don't act like them, and don't do as they do. That's what's wrong with the church today. The music looks like them, the dress looks like them, the messages are as of them, we try to please them. You know, we water it down so we can bring more to the church. We water it down so we can have more friends at work. We water it down so we can have our family. Look at 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6. Division separation is a Bible doctrine. Paul says to the Christians, Wherefore come out from among them and be separate. There you go. Say it the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch that beard. Don't touch that cigarette. Don't touch that woman. She's not your wife. Don't touch that TV dial. There are things that a Christian is not to do. There are places for a Christian not to go. There are even people Christians should not associate themselves with. If there's somebody living in sin, in open sin in the church, they are to be de-churched. You're not to be hanging around with them. It's supposed to be a lesson of, you know what, you're wrong. But today, you know, you sin in a church, you sin against God, you leave, and another church will take you. Or another church will take you. With no questions asked. So Revelation said, come out. Paul says, come out. There was a time that I drank Bacardi uh, rum. I got out of that. I got about out of alcohol. It took many, many years, but eventually I came out of tobacco and, and cigarettes and pipes. I came out of the old man and the old man ways and came into Christ. I don't go to the bars no more. I come out. I don't touch the things I am not to be touching. I don't watch the things I ought not to be watching. We are called to be separate. Proverbs 12. But see, you know, Christians want to fit in. Proverbs 12, I hope. 13. It says, the wicked is a snare by the transgression of his lips. But the just shall come out of trouble. Is that thing going to cause you trouble? Is that thing sin? Ought you to be touching it? Listen, in my unsaved life, I were I was in places, I was with people I should never have been with, but I wasn't saved. I was in a house with a married woman. And my intentions as an unsaved man were not clean. I don't do that no more.
I was a rebel. I was a renegade. I was a boozer. I don't do that no more. I don't associate my, myself with places and events that will bring forth sin, will bring forth condemnation, will bring forth an angry God. I want to be just. I don't want to be in trouble. I have enough trouble of getting myself in trouble innocently. You want to get in trouble rightfully? Is there a white rightful to get in trouble? Hey, go out on the street and preach the gospel. Go into the church and tell them, listen, this is the King James Bible. This is the only Bible I'm fighting with someone today. Man, there's other versions. Well, I don't care what your idiot preacher told you. I don't care where his stand is. He's wrong. I'm in trouble with man, but I'm not in trouble with God. We ought to do things that right where, hey, man, the Christian in the world, I'm in trouble. But God's like, hey, I like it. Paul got himself in trouble all the time with man, the devil, in the world, Christians and Jews. God's like, hey, I like that. Now, there are Christians today that get themselves in trouble with God, but not with the church, not with man, not with... There's a difference. Look, look at Genesis 1. I gotta find this one. Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 4, and God saw the light, that's light, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, from the very creation. Verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God divided, God said light and darkness. He did not put it together. Are we not children of the light? Are we not Christ, the light of the world? Is not darkness of Satan and wickedness? God says, this is the light. God said, this is the darkness. Christian, this is right. This is wrong. This is just and this is sin. There's no middle ground. When you walk down the middle of the road, you're going to get hit by a car. Now Genesis 7. Look at verse 1. This is Noah. And the Lord said to Noah, Come thou and all thy house, seven with Noah makes eight, into the ark. Now God says, Come. You know where God is in that ark right now? He's inside that ark. He says to Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wife, Come on in. You know where the world's going? You know where the sinners are going? They're going to drown and end up in hell. You know where Noah and his family's going to go? They're going to go in safety of the Lord. What is right in Genesis 7 is inside the ark with God. What is wrong? Outside the ark with the world and sinners. There was a division. That division is inside, outside. If you were outside God, you drowned and died. If you were inside with God, you stayed alive. There was no middle ground. No one cling to that ark. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Now, before we get to the verse I want to look at. Revelation 3.15, I know thy work. This is the Laodicean church age. Thou art neither hot nor cold. I would that thou cold or hot. So that thou lukewarm, middle of the road. Neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. When you're walking down the middle of the road, you're making God sick. 
makes God vomit. Here's a cause God says, you know what? You want to be cold? You want to be dead? Go ahead. You want to be hot? You want to be active? You want me to be pleased? All right. But you want to choose, and this is the church age today. You want to walk down that middle of the road. You want to be lukewarm, God says. <laughs> oh, give me a bark bag. I'm in church holy Sunday, you know. I'm, I'm saying no church is holy. I'm in. Well, next Sunday, I, I got a family reunion with my lost family and all that, and I'm going to partake that because I don't want I don't want to make my aunts and uncles upset. I don't want to make dad upset, and I'm not going to say nothing about Jesus. I'm going to say nothing about the Bible because. You know, my brother's saved, and he, you know, he witnesses for Jesus. He's an evangelist. He tells people about Jesus, and they never invite him to the family. I'll just, I'll be a Christian in church, and I'll be the world in the world. Okay? And then, where do you stand? You make God sick. Now, Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door of Jesus and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. The church is vile in the lives of seen church age. Jesus Christ is standing outside the church. He's not in, in the church. He's outside the church. He's got an invitation, not at the altar, at the door. If you will accept the offer of Jesus, he will come into you where he's outside. I go to church. Yeah, but Jesus might be outside your church. I went to the altar. That's not where Jesus is. He's at the door. So to go back to Revelation 18, verse 4, Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. you got to know you got to read, you got to study your Bible, your King James Bible, to know what is sin. Don't rely on your pastor and your preacher today to lie at the scene church age. I've talked with few preachers and pastors and gave them all the evidence of Easter and Christmas to be pagan. And recall the last pastor, well, we're going to do it anyway. The pastor before that, well, we know December 25th is not Jesus' birthday, but, but you're a billy go, you're button. And the thing comes to, if it is sin, the Bible says, come out. You know, in the law, Leviticus, if you sin unwillingly, unknowingly, you were guilty. And when the sin came to your knowledge, you had to deal with that sin. There is no offering in the law. We're not under the law, but there was no offering in the law if you sinned because you wanted to sin. And friend, I'm telling you, now that I told you about one sin of Christmas and Easter, you are now, if I am correct, <clears throat> and you partake of those pagan holidays, you're now a sinner. God's going to hold you accountable where God says, come out of Easter. Come out of Christmas. Don't have that white pen in your mouth. Don't go out with them when they have the cigarette, even though you don't smoke. If you're not supposed to be touching it, don't touch it. If you're not supposed to be there, don't be there. 
If you're not supposed to be doing it, don't do it. And the Bible, if the Bible says do it, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Bible says go in the world and preach the gospel. Go in the world and, and preach the gospel. Oh, my pastor tells me invite them to the church. Nowhere in the scriptures. Well, I want to do this. Is it sin? What's the Bible say? Get yourself your King James Bible. And if you've got a computer, you don't need to go buy it. I don't use a Strong's book. No, i got a Strong's book around here somewhere. I just saw it today somewhere. I don't use it no more. I got. If you see this it's program, the sword searcher, I can search this. I can type up here in the box. Let's say uh, adultery. Adultery. Oh my God. There are 33 verses about adultery. Okay, if I wanted to know about adultery, there they are. Okay? If I wanted to learn about lies, there's all the lies. You can get yourself an online concordance. With the King James Bible. And you can study. Well, watch this. This verse you will not find in modern Bibles. Okay, look, now watch that. Do I know where this verse is? I know what the verse says, kind of. But I can look it up and find it. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Many Christians are going to find themselves ashamed. Well, my pastor told me. My Sunday school told me. And, it, and Jesus is going to say, they were wrong. Your religion was wrong. Your mother was wrong. But the Bible's correct. What does the Bible say about being a mother? What does the Bible say about being a father? What does the Bible say about you being an employer? Or what about you being an employee? Is that in the Bible? Yes, 2 Corinthians 6.17 again. What's the Bible say about being a son or a daughter? What does the Bible say about lying if you lie? What's the Bible say about you dating a girl or dating a boy? What does today? What does the Bible say about sodomy? When they say God loves us and all that, what's the Bible say? When God says that sodomy and homosexuality is an abomination, what's an abomination? Do you know? And another great tool besides a concordance and a King James Bible is Webster's 1828 Dictionary. These will help you to learn. And then when you go to church and you're given scripture by your pastor or your Sunday school teacher, and the scripture I've given you, go home and check them. Go home and check me out. I may have made a mistake. I may say, you know, such and such chapter and verse, and you go there and say, and you type me silently, you're wrong. Ooh. Oh, man, that's, yeah, that wasn't it. I'm sorry. I make mistakes too. 2 Corinthians 6 17, wherefore come out among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Well, you know, they make fun of me. Oh, well, that's what they made fun of Paul. They made fun of Jesus. Touch not the unclean thing. What things are unclean? What are we going to be separated from? What if my Christian friends do this and I found out it's wrong? If everybody jumped off the Hoover Dam, would you jump too? That's 
that's the question. When you find the Bible says it's right, and it's been rightly divided, now make sure it's not written to Israel, make sure it's written to the Christian. Properly study the Bible. Find proper preachers to listen to. Instructors of the Bible. You may have to leave your church. You mean the church where my grandparents? Yeah, maybe where the church where your grandparents are. And believe me, today, 2022, to find a good King James Bible-believing church that's proper in the Word of God, they're scarce. They're very scarce. God wants us to do right. God wants us to be separate. That comes all the way back to Genesis 1. We are to come out of the world. We are to come out of, of sin. Even Christians are doing it. We are to come out. We are to come into God. We are to have Jesus come into us. Jesus is not going to, to come into our filthiness. God is holy. He says, be holy for I am holy. What's that mean? you got to study the Bible. you got to read your Bible to find out what God approves of and what God doesn't approve of. What, do, what does God say about Christian tattoos? What does God say about your music? What's God say about your household, your home, your church? Your job. I know a Christian who, who drives a beer truck. You have no business driving a beer truck. What's, what's the Bible say about beer? Alcohol. Oh, you know, Jesus turned the water to wine. Yeah, did you study that out? Because he didn't drink it. And it wasn't intoxicating wine either. Well, Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine. Yeah, did you study that out? Listen, I've been giving those all those excuses. I've heard them all. I'm a street preacher. I'm an evangelist. I'm a teacher of the Bible. I've taught men in prison. I've taught Sunday school. I've had men... And women who sat under Jesus while God used me and changed their lives for the good. 